is Jordan Adams. I'm a senior here at Northern Arizona University studying park and recreational management. Today I'd like to talk to you about fire on the mountain. More specifically, how does the cost of fighting wildland fires affect outdoor recreation? A little bit of background into me. I spent 12 years fighting wildland fires for the Nevada Division of Forestry. Then I transferred over and I've spent the past three years working for Nevada State Parks in the outdoor recreation field. So I've seen firsthand how both sides can affect each other and especially the costs and how the budgets work on how wildland fires take up a lot of the budgets for outdoor recreation. I don't know how many of you remember but of the Yellowstone fires of 1988. That was called the legendary summer of fire. That is when it is said that fires brought people, science, wild nature together like never before or ever since. In 1988, the Yellowstone fires comprised the largest firefighting efforts the United States had ever seen. They spent over $120 million fighting those wildfires. 1988, that was a lot of money. But when you compare that to 2017 and the rising cost, that's a drop in the bucket to what we are seeing being spent today. In the summer of 2017, the state of California has spent nearly $200 million fighting wildland fires as of October. As so of October, the state of Montana has spent almost $400 million fighting wildland fires. So just these two individual states alone have spent over $600 million fighting wildland fires. And we compare that to 1988, the Yellowstone fires of $120 million. That is just to, to show you how this cost has skyrocketed. Now, those costs are for the state of California and for the state of Montana. That is not including the United States government. The United States Department of Agriculture runs the United States Forest Service, which is the largest wildland firefighting agency in the country. Also, the United States Department of Interior operates agencies such as National Park Service, Bureau of Land Management, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. All four of these agencies are tasked with not only fighting wildland fires, but also outdoor recreation as a whole. They have to figure out how to fund both of these problems. And as we said, the state of California, 200 million. The state of Montana has spent nearly 400 million. But as of September 14, 2017, the United States Department of Agriculture Secretary Ron Perdue announced that the United States Forest Service has spent over $2 billion fighting fires. Yes, that's billion with a B. And it's, that is only as of the middle of September. Ron Perdue is quoted as saying, the Forest Service spending on fire suppression in recent years has gone from 15% to 55% or maybe even more, which means we have to keep borrowing funds that are intended for forest management. So what he's saying is, in order to come up with that $2 billion, they're having to take money out of other responsibilities that they have. Just to highlight a few of the other responsibilities that the U.S. Forest Service has, they're in charge of cultural and natural resources, wildlife, vegetation, and watershed management, roads, along with millions of areas of recreation that people use today. When we talk about vegetation management, some of that is fighting wildland fires. But another aspect of it is wildland fire prevention, which includes forest thinning, different management techniques that help control fires before they ever start. But sadly, when we have to take 55% of your budget to fight the fires, we lose the money that is intended for fire prevention really fast. The spending for wildland fires has steadily gone up years over years. When we look back to the 1990s, we can see here in 1995, the Forest Service spent roughly 16% of their budget fighting wildland fires. 
In 2015, they spent 52% of their budget fighting wildland fires. And as we know already, this year in 2017, they spent 55%. If we continue on this upward trend by the year 2025, it's predicted that we'll spend over 67% of the Forest Service budget fighting wildland fires. So, in order to come up with those 67%, 52%, we ha they have to make budget cuts somewhere. In 2015, just to highlight some of the few budget cuts they've done, they had to cut 68% out of their capital improvement projects. That money directly affected over 21,000 recreational areas that could have seen improvements had they been able to keep that money. They had to cut 95% out of their deferred maintenance fund. Deferred maintenance is stuff as emergency repairs to dams and bridges, Things that affect public safety had to be cut just to fight wildland fires. They also had to cut 15% out of their recreation, heritage, and wilderness programs. This money leads to thousands of businesses that utilize the forest to make their business in the recreational field. Another drastic change cuts that you have seen over the past few years with the National Park Service is personnel. Personnel is probably the largest expenditure any agency has. The cost of people, manpower. Where do we put the manpower? The Forest Service, as I said, has many responsibilities. In the year 1998, they had 18,000 people that were dedicated to managing the national forests. They had roughly 5,000 people that were strictly fire suppression personnel. Now with the rise, rising cost of fires, the more money being spent on fires, that has shifted. In 2015, they had 12,000 people dedicated to fire suppression, and they had roughly 11,000 people managing the forests. So as you can see, that's a huge change. That's a huge shift in where people are. Now let's go to a current application. In June 2017, on the Dixie National Forest, 70,000 acres were burned in what was called the Bryan Head Fire. This fire started in a small town of Bryan Head. It's a resort community that relies on recreation as their sole base for their economy. A lot of the reasons behind this fire was due to the fact that the Dixie National Forest had been cut so heavily on their fire prevention that the forest had been overgrown, lots of bug and dead trees that were left just ripe to burn because the fires, fire suppression was taking so much of their budget. So when this fire happened, it affected many recreational areas that were very important to the local economy of these areas. Some of the key areas that were affected were Yankee Meadows, Penguins Lake, Duck Creek, Mammoth Creek, and just the forest and whole. The whole forest is a huge recreational area. And in this forest, there's an OHV trail system. OHV is off-highway vehicle. And these are your side-by-sides, your four-wheelers, your motorcycles. And there's a network of trails that link all these outdoor areas to these small little communities. These OHVs, when they come into town, they bring hundreds, if not thousands of people that help booster the local economy in these small towns such as Panguage, Parowan, Bryan Head. In the summer months, they rely on these OHVs to support their economy. Now, we talk about the economy. How does wildland firefighting and the economy have anything to do with each other? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, economics is a social science concerned chiefly with the description and analysis of the production, distribution, consumption of goods, and services. So when it comes to fires, we have two aspects to look at when it comes to the local economy of the area. Yeah, the before and after. The true cost of wildfires identified four costs affected by wildland fires. The first two would be your before, your direct and rehabilitation. Direct costs are fighting the fire. How much does it cost to fight the fire and get it put out? Rehabilitation costs would be emergency repairs to things that have been damaged directly during or after the fire. We're talking within a year of the fire, what has been repaired. Those can actually be considered positive impacts to the local economy. Now, according to the true cost of wildfire, we have two more costs to think about that are the negative impacts 
of wildland fire to the local economy. Those are your indirect and additional costs. Indirect costs are things such as tax revenue. When homes burn, when property burns, generally property value goes down. That leads to a decrease in your sales tax and your property tax. When your recreation areas are closed, that brings less people to boost your economy, which also means less sales tax, less people staying in your hotels, less people buying fuel. That has a huge effect on the local economy. So like I said, positive impacts can be your money spent fighting the fire. Negative impacts are tax dollars, loss of sales and property tax, and just generally loss of recreational areas as a whole. So as we said, four costs associated with wildfires, direct, indirect, rehabilitation, and addition. How is the Forest Service and how does this matter? The Forest Service is funded based on what's called a 10-year average rolling budget. If everything stays the same in 2025, this will be up to $1.8 billion. In order to come with that $1.8 billion, they're going to have to reduce their own non-fire programs by roughly $700 million. Now this is just Forest Service, not Department of Interior. So let's just look at the Forest Service. So what will cutting $700 million do? How will it affect us? Well, you're going to see less park rangers, less campgrounds, less trails, less visitor centers, just a general cut in everything to do with outdoor recreation. We're going to have to cut those areas in order to come up with that $700 million. So, how, what can we do to fix this problem? Well, this is a natural disaster in my opinion. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a natural disaster is a sudden and terrible event in nature, such as a hurricane, tornado, or flood, that usually results in serious damage. Are wildland fires not sudden and terrible events? Can they not cause serious damage and, yes, even death? Well, if that's the case, then why are wildland fires not funded the same as other natural disasters? All other natural disasters are covered by FEMA who has special funding in place to cover these disasters. So, what can we do? How do we spell relief? How do we fix this problem? Well, there's one thing that hopefully can help, and that is the Wildfire Disaster Funding Act, which is in front of Congress today. This would allow agencies who exceed their 10-year average to pull funds out of a special fund instead of using their own money. So instead of having to take that $700 million, they could pull it from another fund. So in conclusion, if we want to see more ducks on the pond, more hiking trails, healthier forests, better camping areas, and simply more money and time devoted to outdoor recreation, something has to change. Whether it's Wildland Wildfire Disaster Funding Act or whatever, we need to figure out a new way to fund the U.S. Forest Service, the BLM, the cost of wildland fires, is affecting outdoor recreation as a whole way too much.